There was this long time ago. I was in charge of my cousins and his four friends while they slept over. My uncle was paying me $100 to watch them for the night. All I did was play video games with a bunch of 10 year olds for most of the night. I thought it would be the easiest 100 bucks I ever made, but things took a huge turn for the worse when I heard footsteps coming from upstairs. We were in the basement playing video games. Two of the kids also heard the sound. I counted five kids sitting on the couches and neither my aunt or uncle was supposed to be home that night. I swallowed my gum when I realized the basement door was wide open. I told them to stay there while I ran upstairs to shut the door. The door didn't have a lock from the inside, only at the outside. I called to the kids to go hide in the workout room. I shut the TV off and all the lights and then followed them into the workout room. We listened in the dark as the footsteps approached the basement door and then the horrible sound of the basement door opening, followed by heavy footsteps stomping down each stair, one by one. One of my cousin's friends were crying. I had to tell him to shut the hell up. I leaned against the door with a chair and a bunch of barbell weights against it. I listened as the door to the boiler room was open and a few moments later closed. Screams of the children filled the room as the door and up to the workout room began to turn. I pushed the door with all my might to keep it shut. Whoever was on the other side quickly gave up as we heard rushed footsteps going up the stairs. I heard the footsteps right above our heads moving in the direction of the front door. This was before anyone had cell phones, so calling somebody f first wasn't an option. I scanned the whole house, finding that the front door had been left open and all the bedrooms upstairs had been trashed. No one was in the house, so I called the kids up. A few things had been stolen, but as long as no one was hurt, we were all happy. It happened to my wife's grandmother about 15 years ago while we were still dating. Her husband had just passed away about a year previously, but she had been going down to the library and volunteering. It was exercise and socialization. This was in the winter, so her walk back was while it was getting dark. The library closed at five and there was some extra stuff to do before everyone actually left. And on this particular night, she turned down a ride from another volunteer because she needed to stay in shape. The house is about a mile away through some lightly wooded area in South Texas and sh sh as she's about a half way home, she notices someone behind her. He's walking the same direction and gaining on her, which in itself isn't that particularly creepy. She's old and thus not particularly fast, but in this case, he seems vaguely sinister. They kept walking. Pretty soon, he's right behind her. Then he falls in the pace just stand behind her. Now she knows something's up, but she's almost home. She can see the top of her driveway coming up. And if she leaves her lights on, it would look like someone's home when she walks in. She just needs to make it another 150 yards, then 100. Around maybe 50 yards, it happens. A strong hand on her shoulder. Okay, woman, don't turn around and hand over your purse or I'll cut you. She stops for a second, then takes one big step forward, turns around and shoots the guy in the neck with a 38 she keeps in her purse. The guy spent the next five years in a prison hospital before he died of complications. My wife's grandmother passed away a year later. But up to the end, she said that she pulled the trigger too soon.